Hello everyone, welcome to A plus VI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an absolute value equation with complex numbers. We have z minus 2 times z bar and the absolute value of that is equal to 15 and we're going to be solving for z values. z is a complex number. What is a complex number? A complex number can be written as a plus b i where a and b are real numbers and i is the square root of negative 1. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like algebra, number theory, trigonometry problems, make sure to check out Cyber Math, my other channel, Cyber with an S. Great, so let's see how we can solve a problem like this. I'm also going to show you the results from Wolfram Alpha. I said results because there's more than one. So we'll see what that looks like. Okay, great. So we have the absolute value of something. So how do you write the absolute value of a number? There's a definition. So if z is equal to a plus bi, then its absolute value is going to be written as the square root of a squared plus b squared. So you basically square the real part, square the imaginary part, and then add them up and square root of that. That's basically by the Pythagorean theorem. So if you think about it, the complex number can be plotted as a point or as a vector in the coordinate plane or argon plane. There's an angle, there's a distance, and r is the distance of z from the origin, which uh, is 0, 0, or just 0 in this case. Then we can kind of define it as absolute value of z. So r is the absolute value of z, and theta is called the argument, the angle that it makes. For our problem, it's probably irrelevant, even though we could still try to use it. Let's go ahead and just substitute this for z. Obviously, we're not looking at absolute value of z only, but more like this. So, if z is a plus bi, then we get a plus bi for z minus 2 times the conjugate, the complex conjugate of z, which is shown as z bar, is a number such that when multiplied by z or added to z, gives you a real number all the time. And that's uh, unique in that sense, right? So if you have a plus bi, its conjugate is a minus bi. So here it's gonna be a minus bi. We're gonna take the absolute value of the whole thing, and that's supposed to equal 15. Now, I gotta tell you though, replacing z with a plus bi may not always be a good idea, even though the, this channel is called a plus bi. Did you know that? Obviously, hopefully. Uh, it's not always a good idea because this looks like a locus problem to me, and I'm going to explain a little, little bit what that means. I'd rather uh, replace z with x plus y i. It's kind of like an easy conversion. Instead of a, you use x. Instead of b, you use y. So that's fairly easy to do. So we get x plus y i minus 2 times x minus y i, which is the complex conjugate. And this whole thing is equal to 15. So by using the definition of absolute value, we can first... Simplify this expression a little bit, and what is that going to look like? We're going to simplify, like put together real parts and imaginary parts, and then look at the whole thing as a single entity. So here we're going to get x plus yi minus 2x plus 2yi, and the absolute value of that is equal to 15. Now this should give you negative x, and that should give you plus 3yi is equal to 15. Now, what does that mean? I mean, we have the absolute value of something. Well, just use the definition of absolute value. That's going to give you the square root of negative x squared, which is x squared plus 9y squared, and then it's equal to 15. Awesome. But what is that supposed to mean? Well, that, this gives me an equation in x and y, which is why we call this a locus problem. And I'm going to tell you what that means. But let's go ahead and square both sides first. If you square both sides, you're going to get x squared plus 9y squared equals 225. Now, what do you think that looks like? If you're not sure, do the following. Divide everything by 225. And if you do that, you're going to get something like this and something like this, which is going to equal 1 at the end, which is good because we're going to look at it from a conics perspective. And what are conics? We'll talk about that as well. But there's a special type of shape. So simplify this because 9 goes into 225. I think 900, uh, it's 9 times 25. So we could write it like x squared over 225 
plus y squared over 25 equals 1. Nice. Now, this is a really nice form, and if you think about the general form, it looks like this. Uh, can you guess what this means? Well, if a and b are equal, then we can just use a common denominator, and let's just replace a and b with r. We get x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And yes, that's a circle. But this is not a circle because a and b are different. So what is this? Well, kind of like a distorted version. You don't have a circle, but if you kind of press on the sides, kind of distort the shape a little bit, you get something called an ellipse, right? This is an ellipse, and we're going to just graph it, right? How do you graph it? Good question. So if you look at the major axis and the minor axis, so on and so forth, I mean, that's no big deal, but uh, let me just show you real quick. You can, for, for example, um, you can go ahead and replace x with zero. Okay, great. x equals zero is gonna give you y squared equals 25, and that means two things. y is either five or negative five. So if x is zero, which means you're on the x-axis, you're going to get 5 and negative 5. So let's just go ahead and mark them like this, 5 and negative 5. And the reason why I use such a small scale is because my next number is going to be a little bigger than 5. That's why. So this is x, this is y. And now we're going to go ahead and replace y with 0. That's going to give me x squared equals 225. And that means x is 15 or negative 15. So if y is 0, then we have like 5, 10, and 15. 5, 10, and negative 15. Makes sense? Those are going to be my intercepts. And once you know the intercepts of the ellipse, you, you can pretty much graph it, can't you? I mean, it's going to look like this. Think about it. And yes. So in other words, what is the solution to this problem? Any point on this ellipse is a solution. But if you really wanted to be particular about it, for example, pick this point. That's going to be 5i. If z is 5i, it should, it should satisfy this equation. Let's check it out. If z is 5i, z bar is going to be negative 5i. The absolute value of z minus 2z bar is going to be 5i minus 2 times negative 5i, which is 5i plus 10i, which is 15i. The absolute value of 15i is 15. As you can imagine, the distance from 0 is just going to be 15 units. And no matter which number you use, but the, the question is, are there any real solutions, right? Well, it's right there on the graph. Any point you pick here, but how do you know which point you pick? Well, you can say that, okay, I'm just gonna use x equals five. What happens if x is equal to five? You have to find out from this equation, x squared over 225 plus y squared over 25 equals one. If x is five, this is gonna give you 25. 25 goes to 225, I think nine times. It's going to be 1 over 9, and then you just have to solve for y. There's going to be two values, and it's 1, and so forth. Why are there two values for a particular x? Because of this. This is symmetrical. So we have two types of symmetries here. And let's go ahead and check out Wolfram Alpha's result, because I'm curious. Aren't you curious? Ta-da-da-da. <laughs> Solution. Okay, I don't know why Wolfram Alpha came up with something like this, but it can also provide real solutions. Not complex solutions, because there are infinitely many. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time, see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.